We're talking parenting now, and I bet each of your kids has a habit you wish they would kick. Whether it's thumb sucking, nose picking, or that wee classic nugget of tantrum throwing, our experts are here today to help. And joining me in the Anmum Pedia Pro 3 coffee group this morning, behaviour specialist Dr Adila Afiz and John Cowan from The Parenting Place. Good morning to you both, great to have you Good on the show. Good morning, thanks mate. Good to see you again John too. Okay, I'm going to start with you John, where on earth do these habits come from? Well, they work for us. They save us so much energy when we do so many things automatically during the day. And, and habits get us what we want. I mean, for kids, they get us the attention. They get, us, they get uh, um, might be smiles and cuddles back if we use good manners. All these habits usually work for us. Sometimes, though, you can't understand why scratching or nose picking and everything like that. What's the reward of that? Maybe it's a self-comforting thing. True. Maybe it's something that used to work but doesn't work for us anymore, like shyness. And that can become a habit that doesn't work for us? No, no, you're right. Okay, well, let, let's talk more about some of these common complaints. Adela, I'm going to start with you. Some of our viewers have toddlers who bite. Yeah. So if they bite, what can you do? <laughs> as toddlers, they're still using non-verbal communication as their main way to talk to you. So what's behind biting? Are they frustrated? Are they upset? Are they angry? Um, are they trying to show you with their behaviour how they're feeling? Um, or, as John actually just said, do they get attention for that? If they continue to do it, mm. what can you do to stop it? Yeah. Or do you stop it? Yeah, biting is particularly distressing for vegetarian parents. And, uh, <laughs> so uh, so uh, one of the things that you've just got to believe is that children aren't evil. Right. They're not doing it because they're, they're villains. They right. are actually experimenting with trying different things. And sometimes biting works really well because you suddenly become the celebrity that everybody's focusing their attention on. Wow, look at that. All I had to do was just take a chomp out of a mate and <laughs> look at all the stir that I'm creating. <laughs> and so I think one of the best solutions to this is to turn all your attention to the poor victim. Okay. That is if the other kid's mum will let you anywhere near that right. child. But, yes, uh, true. <laughs> if that, you know, your, your biter suddenly realises, hold on, this isn't working for me, I'm, I'm not getting the attention the child, the other, the, person the other one is. is. Yes. And then you turn to your child and say, why did you get a cold flannel for Sam? I don't know what they're going to do with the, fl <laughs> with the flannel, but it changes changes their, their labelling from I am now a biter to I'm now a helper. OK, no, I get that. OK, what about John? To stay with you, nose picking. What, what if your child's a nose picker? Tell them to wait until they're driving a car and they're stuck in traffic <laughs> and they're thinking nobody's watching. Yeah, I but, see a lot of that <laughs> on the traffic lines. Um, <laughs> what can you give, do, though? Give them a tissue. Yes, it's always okay, good to go tell on. kids what to do rather than what not to do. So give them a tissue and say, blow, and okay. now go and wash your hands. And so that giving them the tissue and getting them to wash their hands each time will just sort of bring it to their attention and give them a better activity to do. And Adela, I guess you don't want your child to feel embarrassed either, do you? And how often do we see adults picking their nose as mm. well? And so let's lead by good behaviour. So show them what you'd rather have them do, like John said, and then reward them for the good behaviour. Mm. OK, right, and uh, tantrums. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big one, I know. Because I watch my sister and sometimes, you know, her child will be having a tantrum and then I, you know, I'm thinking, well, what does she do? Mm. How do you deal with kids having tantrums, Adela? Something I talk a lot about is what's underneath the tantrums. Sometimes when it's a consistent behaviour, what else might be going on for that child? Are they feeling vulnerable? Mm. Um, are they feeling bullied? Do they have something else going on that maybe we need to find out about? If it is, if it has become a behavioural issue in terms of that's how they've realised they get behaviour or they get what they want when it's at the supermarket, um, then I, as the parents, I would say find a really consistent approach that works for you and your partner and do it even though it's going to be really frustrating at times. We get that, but consistency is the best approach. And John, what was your advice? Um, I don't reward the, the tantrum, but also give them the calm that your child is needing at that time. Okay. If you get stirred up and they're already stirred up, things aren't going to settle down very quickly. So lend them your calm. And also a good little motto is uh, the time to deal with a problem is when it's not a problem. And if you're trying to talk to a kid that's having a tantrum, it's like trying to talk yeah. to a drunk. It doesn't achieve very much. And then, you know, and so uh, well, wait till they've calmed down. Having a tantrum. <laughs> <laughs> it's your partner was having a tantrum. OK, okay <laughs> just quickly then, what if I'm in the supermarket and I mm. see somebody having, you know, problems with their child having a tantrum in the supermarket? As a bystander or an uncle, mm. what can I do to help? Do I just walk past and ignore it? Probably the worst part of your child having a tantrum is just imagining what every other adult 
around you is thinking. thinking. Yes. yes. So rather than just roll your eyes and or, or sort of studiously avert, avert your eyes, give them a sympathetic look and right. just and uh, you know show your support in that way. To make them think that it's yeah. not you know perhaps bo we drop a bottle of wine in their <laughs> supermarket <laughs> trolley yeah. or something. <laughs> we understand. <laughs> hey, brilliant advice. Thank you so much, guys. You're welcome. Really appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoy that at home as well. And the coffee group is brought to you by Ann Mum Pedia Pro Three, the only toddler milk with no added sugars. And if you have any worries you'd like addressed by our parenting panel. You can message us on the cafe Facebook page. Now, one contributor is going to win this very cool ebook from Anne Mum that allows you to record your voice reading the story, which Mel has done for us. Have a wee listen. Sweet dreams, Mike. Here's a special bedtime story from me just for you. Oh, that is so nice. This week's winner is Ashley Montgomery. Congratulations. <laughs>